Hello, this is Jordan Price for Computer Science 390 with Professor Norman leading the study. So, here we are going to be doing a tutorial for System Power. Fun fact about the System Power System Power only means to put the touch panel into a low power state, which is basically just setting the LCD as low as possible on the screen. So, having a black screen with very little text as instructions seeing as the touch panel is 90% of the time on. So what we'll be doing is just creating a separate page. So we'll be learning how to swap between pages in this tutorial, which will implement the power off state. Normally, we will also turn off the display as well, but that will be covered in another tutorial. So first off, we're going to quick create a new project, a power, sorry, system. Our tutorial. I am terrible at typing. So put our AV tag as well. Touch to a state. Wow, that is a bad state spell. Okay. So we've got our processor here, the RMC3. We're going to go through the steps again on slot 3 here under, or ID3 under slot 2. We're going to add our touch panel 760. That is the panel that we will be using for the entire project. Sorry, class. So now we're going to hop over here to the program view. And we're going to quick just grab under all symbols, all logic symbols. We're just going to quick go down to interlock, toss that into power. Sorry, into the logic folder. I'm thinking about stuff from earlier today. I apologize. We're going to open that up. We're going to find our processor here as well. And I found that these are different names for the D boxes. And I find that this tile vertical tool, it's a very nice tool and arranges it very well. So on my phone, I just have a reference image that I'm going to be following. That up. All right, so here's also another fun thing. If you see this touch panel over here in the program view, click on that little plus button, and we can also get the buttons on the side touch panel. If you recall from our last video, there were the power button, the home button, light up and down arrow on the side of the touch panel. This is where we assign those. So on the power button, we're going to assign a sleep screen. So that's the button that we're going to press to put this into the low power state. So this sleep screen is going to be synonymous with press 1. And we're going to also set sleep screen to be input 1 of the interlock. And then we're going to press Alt Shift plus key to add another line into this interlock. Seeing as there's a hollow arrow point here, it allows us to add multiple different inputs. So then for press 2, what we're going to do is hit or type in wake screen. There are the two different symbols that we're using to put this screen to sleep and bring it awake. And the interlock is going to make sure that only one of those is active at a time, seeing as you can't have two screens on at the same time. Now there's an exception to that using subscreens, but we're not going to touch on that today. So when we press the sleep screen, we want the sleep screen to be active. So we're going to name that sleep screen active. And then we're going to name the next one wake screen active. We're going to grab both of these and we're going to pull these on over to the touch panel. Now you might think, oh, there's a ton more we need to work on. Nope, that's it. That's all we have to do. So all we have to do is remember that our sleep screen is on press one. And our wake screen is on press 2. That's going to be helpful when we want to call each of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Control S to save it. I'm going to go into the System Power Tutorial folder that I just created. System Power Tutorial. Make sure I spelled that correctly. I apologize. So now that it's saved. I'm going to press F12 to compile it. 
And yes, I would like to transfer it. I'm going to send it over USB to the processor. Now it's going to pull up a nice little window right here. Any second, there we go. So it's showing me the next one. The current project loaded on would be system power because I was testing it earlier to make sure it still worked. So now I'm going to hit the send button to overwrite it with the program we just made. Now that that program is sent to the processor through the magic of editing, we're going to close it out. Now this whole project I'm going to leave open so that we can refer to this later, but it's already loaded onto the processor and we don't need to do anything else with this. So we're going to open up our visual tool. We're going to create a new project. Let me just make that really quick. Create. Choose our theme. We can really pick any theme, but we don't really care right now about specific themes. We'll get to aesthetics later. So first off, we're going to call this first page our wait screen. And then we're going to add another screen here and call it sleep screen. Very aptly named. Now, here's the fun part. When you load this program on the virtual touch panel, it's not going to know which one of these is your first touch panel, or sorry, your first screen. So you want to right click on whichever one you want to be first. In this case, I'm going to select wake screen because I want it to load up instantly to what we want. Some of you might want uh, the sleep screen active. So we'll show you what that looks like. Although later on, I'll be doing the wake screen. So for the sleep screen, double click on that, make sure that this is the correct one screen. Here it is. We're just going to make a really, really big button. I know, smartest thing to do. Make it cover the whole page. So we're going to come over here to button style and we're going to pick, oh, I don't know, just a standard big button that doesn't have rounded corners. Find a good one. Hey, that looks nice. So we're going to put a label on here and we're going to say press screen to wake system. Boom. Now, if we want, we could add a nice little text shadow on here, but we don't really want to do that. We want to click on the page now. So now we have the pages settings here. This is no longer the button. For background, we're going to quick change this color to be black. And we're going to check display background. So even if the button doesn't show any of the background, or if there's a little overlap, it's going to be a little bit darker. You just have that dark background just to make everything nice and power less consuming. So now we see this visibility join right here. This means that whatever signal is high, we want that to be what determines which screen is active. So if we have signal one high, whichever screen has a one here, that's going to be the one that shows. So I'm just going to reference the picture that we took. Well, why don't we just reference it together? Because I have the wrong picture. So here we have our sleep screen at 1. So since this is our sleep screen, we're going to set this value to 1. So now we can hop on over to the wake screen. And this is what we're going to see when it's active. And this one is set to 2. So now we can just toss some random stuff on here. Let me do this off camera. So now that we have our content on the screen, we're going to hit Control S to save the program. Oh, sorry. I've selected the wrong one. So it's now saved. So we're going to hit F12 to compile the program. Now that it's compiled, it's going to ask us, hey, do you want to send this to a touch panel? We don't want to send it to a touch panel. We don't have a physical one yet. But it already generated the program so we can run it on a computer. So I'm going to quick pull up File Explorer. I'm going to go to Desktop, Restaurant Project, Touch Panel Project, 
and here we have the file. We're going to double click on the .vtz format. It's going to pull up a nice little touch screen. So I'm going to enter my IP address as 53.106.219.215. Now this is going to be different for everyone, like I've mentioned in the tutorial or the last video. I forget which one of the two it was. But I'm going to double click on this because if you notice, this port here is different than the default port that it originally assigned. But I'm too lazy to remember that number, so I just double click this. So I'm going to hit connect, and here we are. I'm going to press the button. Wow, that's embarrassing. Okay, that didn't work. So let's see why that didn't work. I want to cut that, but I can't. So I just figured out why. It was a rookie mistake. We're going to hop on over to the sweep screen. We're going to click on this button here. This press digital join. We want to set that to a value of two. See, simple mistakes happen all the time. So now we're going to save this project again, compile it, hit cancel, and we're going to try running that program one more time. So now, if I click on it, there we are. We have our content on our main screen. And if we try pressing the power button, it puts the whole thing to sleep. Now later on, we'll implement a little sub-step between them, where it'll ask if we want to shut the projector down or if we want to cancel the system sleep. Because this button, if you'll notice in reality, is actually pretty easy to hit, on, even on accident. So that's it for this tutorial. We'll see you again next time.